Hi guys, in this video I'm going to just be talking through a screen here and this is going to be a tutorial on understanding how to calculate and set an appropriate exposure. Uh, so starting off, just a wee summary here, you might have seen this at the end of my shutter speed video where we've got three values that each work together to set your exposure. We've got aperture, shutter speed and ISO. Each of them can be either increased or decreased in order to make the image brighter or darker, but they all work together in order to create a balanced exposure overall. So in other words, if you made your aperture lower, then you are going to get a brighter image and so to compensate, either the shutter speed or the ISO would need to change in the other direction uh, in order to get that exposure level again. So what we're going to look at today is how much do each of these need to change by in order to um, cancel each other out in terms of if you changed one of them, for example. So what is exposure then? Exposure is how bright or dark your image is. Generally, the desired outcome is going to be a balanced or equal exposure. There is some certain circumstances where that might not be the case. So, for example, if you were shooting directly into the sun and you want to create a silhouette on somebody, you're probably going to want to expose for the sun and the background. And in doing so, the person in the shot is going to be silhouetted. But generally speaking, we'll be looking at trying to get an equal exposure. If you use either fully automatic mode, the camera will take care of everything for you, but we want to try and move away from that um, because the camera doesn't always know what you're taking a photo of and what effect you might need in terms of one of these three values, more so the aperture and the shutter speed, which are a little bit more creative. If you use either aperture priority or shutter priority, with aperture priority, you get to set the aperture and then based off of that, the camera will automatically set the other two, the shutter speed and the ISO, or if you're doing shutter priority, you will set the shutter speed and then the camera will calculate an aperture and ISO um, to create a balanced exposure overall. So they're two really useful modes to consider using, certainly to help you get going with getting out of that automatic mode on your camera. So what this video is about mainly is understanding what we call a stop of light in photography. A stop of light is basically the relationship between when you change either your aperture shutter speed or your ISO because the numbers don't uh, correlate with each other perfectly. Um, so we use this term a stop of light to refer to what the equivalent change is for changing the aperture compared to changing the shutter speed, compared to changing the ISO. If we change one of these three factors by a full stop, then what that means is to keep the same exposure in the image and to not let the image get any brighter or any darker, one of the other two would need to change by a full stop as well, but in the opposite direction. For example, if we widen the aperture by a full stop, we've let more light in, so the image will technically get brighter, but what the camera will then do is it'll either increase the shutter speed by a full stop and make the shutter go faster. The ISO, it could decrease that by a full stop and that'll make your sensor less sensitive to light, or it may do a slight combination of the both Depend, so maybe change the ISO by a third of a stop and change the shutter speed by two thirds of a stop. And overall, it's changed by a full stop, but partially on the shutter speed and the ISO. For ISO itself, ISO represents how sensitive your camera sensor is to the light being shone on it. And the higher the ISO number, the more sensitive it is and the brighter the image will therefore be. Generally, most cameras will have an ISO range of 100 up to, if it's an older camera, it might only go up to 3200 or 6400. Most cameras I've came across would go up to at least 12,800, but some can go even higher. ISO is quite easy to understand because if you start off at 100, each time you double the ISO, 
you increase the exposure by a full stop. So diagram here to represent what I'm saying there, 100, 200, 400, 800 and so on, each of those jumps indicates an increase in the exposure level by a full stop of light. Shutter speed is also very similar to ISO in terms of what happens when you increase it. Um, shutter speed is recorded as time in seconds on your camera, but typically because of how fast the shutter will be going, it'll generally be a fraction of a second that shows up. Most cameras will again have a range of one over two thousandth of a second, which is extremely fast, to 30 seconds, which would be extremely slow. And that is where the, the sensor would be exposed to light for 30 seconds, which is quite a lot of time. And there could be a lot of movement in that. And that's where you would get a really long exposure shot, for example. And this is what I was saying about similarly to ISO, doubling or halving the shutter speed alters the exposure by a full stop in either direction. So looking at this diagram, if we started off at one over two thousandth of a second and changed it to one over one thousandth of a second, then we have what we have done is increased the exposure by a full stop because that shutter is getting slower. Although one over a thousand is still pretty fast, um, that is increased the exposure by a full stop. So the equivalent of going from uh, ISO 100 to ISO 200 would change the brightness by the same as going from one over two thousandth of a second to one over one thousandth of a second. Finally, we've got aperture. Now, aperture is a little bit more complex. That's why I've left it till last. It's recorded as an F number, and generally that F number on most lenses will, will go from for the for really really expensive lenses you might get an f1 lens um typically most zoom lenses will be f3.5 maybe f4 you do get some more expensive zoom lenses that start at f2.8 um and go up to most will go up to f22 and the f number relates to how big the opening is on the lens. The, and this is where it's a little bit confusing. The lower the F number, the bigger that opening is, and the wider the aperture is, <clears throat> and therefore the more light it's going to let in. Unfortunately for aperture, each full stop of light is not as simple as just doubling it, or not quite. There is a little bit of a, a wee trick to this. An easy way I find to remember this is if you remember what the first two stops are, although technically you can get something lower than F1, but for the purposes of this, we'll go with F1 and F1.4 as the first two aperture ratings. And then the, also note the difference between them is one full stop of light. So if we go from F1 to F1.4, we have decreased the exposure by a full stop because that higher number is a narrower aperture and lets less light in. Now the trick here is remembering these two, if you then double each of them continually, you will start to build a chart that represents each of the apertures that create a full stop of difference of light between each of them. So a diagram here to represent them, if I start off at F1 and then jump up to F2 on the left hand side and then F4 and then F8 and then F16 and on the right go from F1.4, double that, 2.8, double that, 5.6, double that, pretty much 11, double that, F22. That then allows me to create this wee chart where each diagonal arrow going from F1 to F1.4 that has increased the exposure, sorry, that's actually decreased the exposure by a full stop, um, typo at the bottom there. And going from F1.4 to F2, again, that has also decreased the exposure by a full stop, as is F2 to 2.8 and so on. So let's have a look at some examples here and see if we understand this properly. Bobby takes a photo with a good exposure 
and well balanced using the following settings. F5.6, 1 200th of a second, and ISO 800. He decides he wants more background blur, and what we've learned about aperture is that if we use a wider aperture, that is going to allow for a more blurry background. So he changes his aperture to 2.8. What options does he have with his other camera settings to be able to create the same exposure? There are several answers to this. We'll go through them all, but try and come up with at least one of your own. Pause this video now and work out what would be what you think would be an equal exposure to those settings there, and then hit play and we'll see what answers we've got. So, possible answers are as follows. His initial settings, I've put them up here, f5.6, 1 200th of a second and ISO 800. He's changed his aperture to f2.8. And if we go back to our aperture ratings, f2.8 is half of f5.6. So that will be two full stops of light that's, that it's changed by. Because remember, we've got f4 in between them, which would be a full stop of light on that chart. So if we've changed this, or if Bobby's changed this by two full stops of light, then what we need to do is we need to cut out light, two stops of it, from at least one or a combination of both the shutter speed and the ISO. So options, he could increase the shutter speed by two full stops and keep the ISO the same. So he could go f2.8, one eight hundredth of a second shutter speed and keep the ISO at 800. What that's done is we've gone from one two hundredth to one four hundredth, that'd be one stop, and then double that again, one eight hundredth, and that's much faster, so it's letting in less light, so that's two stops of light less, and that makes up for the two stops of light we gained by going from 5.6 to 2.8. Alternatively, he could keep the shutter speed the same and change the ISO by two full stops, bringing it down first to 400, that'd be one stop, and then half it again down to 200, and that would be two full stops of light. And that would cancel off the change that he's made to his aperture. Finally, he could do a combination of each. So he could change the shutter speed by one stop and decrease the ISO by one stop, giving him settings of f2.8, one four hundredth of a second for the shutter speed and ISO of 400. All three of those would provide the exact same exposure as the original. The only differences would be, the well, the, the ISO would create less grain if he went down to ISO 200, um, but he might need a fast enough shutter speed to freeze action. So it, it largely depends on what he's actually photographing here as to whether it's more important to freeze the action and have a fast shutter speed or more important to have less grain in his image and reduce the ISO. Okay, another example here, David is down at the beach and wants to take a long exposure shot of the water running onto the sand. He takes a test shot at F8, two seconds, ISO 100, and the image is too bright. This one's gonna be multi-choice. Which of the following setting combinations will give him a better exposed image based on what he's trying to do here. Okay, the correct answer here would be C. F8 keeps the aperture the same, so that hasn't changed the brightness or dimness at all. Cutting it down to one second is still a long exposure, uh, so we'll get some movement in the water there, but it's going to make the image dimmer because we've cut the time that that sensor is exposed to the light and he's kept the ISO at 100, so that won't change anything either. And hopefully you found this video helpful, guys. Um, if there's any questions, again, drop a comment down below and I'll try and get back to you.